All right, today we're going to be replacing the bottom half seat cover for this driver's side seat out of my 2000 Forerunner. And just to get this out of the way immediately, I am not going to be reupholstering this myself. Obviously, I got this cover here that's already pre-made. You got this off of eBay. And they pretty much, if you search around on eBay, you can pretty much find these pre-made seat covers for any kind of car. If they make them for a 2000 Toyota 4Runner, I'm sure you can find them for Volkswagens. I know I looked for them for my dad's F350. They had them pre-made on there. Uh, I've seen some for Crown Victorias. So they're out there. You just got to do a little bit of searching. You can see here, we got some foam damage. So I got this foam here. I'm going to be cutting it up taping it in there and then putting this cover over top of that. All right, getting this seat out was super simple. You've got four bolts. You know, each corner has a bolt. Each car is going to be a little bit of different procedure to do. The, this forerunner has a couple clips that you had to undo. Just get a screwdriver, pry up different ways on it. Just be gentle so that you don't break the little clips on the inside because they're plastic. Also, as you can see here, this is not a bad time to go in there and clean up all around your seat. This is some LED lighting I have that I didn't really install thoroughly. So while we're in here, once we get this cleaned up, get the seat fixed and put it back in, I'm going to be fastening this to the underside of the seat with some mechanics wire. So we'll get all this cleaned up and do that after we finish the new seat. Alright, once you get the seat out, first step you're going to want to do is get the side covers off. This one is just a Phillips head, but depending on your car, you might need to just pry it off. You might need Allen keys. Uh, you might need Torx bits. I've seen some seats that use Torx bits. So it all just depends on your application. I'm going to go ahead and start taking this off. You should really go slow and take your time when taking stuff off. Because um, obviously if you started trying to take this piece off, you would miss that this lever actually needs to come off first. And uh, both the screw screws for those two things are both right here. So take your time, make sure you take things off in order and everything will go a lot smoother. All right, now on to the next part. You can see this knob is on here and it doesn't, it doesn't twist off by moving it all the way to the left position and, and then keep going. It doesn't go off that way. You can see there's no marks around it to kind of slide it out. But if you look inside there, there is a little C-clip that you need to push out and then the knob will come off. It's important to note these little things so that you don't go breaking anything. I can't show you it from here, but once I get it off, I will show you the C-clip. Alright, so it popped right off with the flat head. Here's the C-clip. And here is the inside of the knob. It's got uh, little grooved, grooved teeth that go on here. And there's the ring that the c-clip sits on all right so now that we got that stuff off we should be able to just slide this off maybe there we go kind of work it move this out there we go slides right off all right now that we got all of our stuff off here You can see it's pretty dirty. So we're gonna go give that a wash real quick before we move forward. All right, we got everything cleaned off here. I just used a dish sponge and pine saw and hot water. And it was all dirty along the bottom here. And you can see just how, how much better it looks now. 
just something to think about. Like if you ever, whenever you go through a drive through or a car through, um, you know, a car drive through or whatever, <clears throat> and you spill soda in your seat and you clean up the seat, um, there's still always going to be a little bit left in here. And so when I took this off, it was really dirty inside here. Um, it was dirty all along the bottom here on this side too. Just something to keep in mind. You can easily clean this stuff off with a sponge and dish soap or pine salt or whatever. And it's just going to make it look a whole lot better in the end once, once you get everything back together. All right. Next step is going to be to take the back half off here and that's, going to be these two bolts you got a 14 and a 14 on either side and something to note is this 14 bolt is the same size bolt that was keeping the chair secured to the floor uh, something car manufacturers often do to just keep the process simpler less less bolt sizes so anyways we're gonna go ahead and take them off and after you get those bolts out <laughs> You're gonna go ahead and unhook these two seats. So you got a you got a little J right here. It's hard to see. There you go. You got a little J right there, and then you got one on the top, and they just hook into each other. So you just need to kind of pry them apart, and then you'll be able to take this top seat cover off. All right, now that we got the back off, we're gonna remove the bottom seat. From these tracks and it looks like again we've got 14 millimeter bolts two on each side so we're gonna go ahead and take those off so those um, seat rack bolts are actually 12s but they were skinnier and longer so it's gonna be easy to differentiate differentiate these from the ones that held the back on it's also important to look at how everything is oriented with the tracks um all the bolts are out so it's very loose right now it's important to note um this is the pivot for the back and you can see it slides and it it hooks into this side with a female and then it goes into that side with a male so with that being said we can go ahead and just kind of pull up on this Everything should be disconnected. Oh, we got one wire there. Hold on. All right, so we got the wire disconnected on the bottom there. So now the next step is going to be to go around with some kind of bolt cutters or wire cutters. I prefer dikes. Um, I don't have those right now immediately within my vicinity so I'm probably just going to use a pair of garden shears and you're just going to want to go around and take out all these little copper hog rings. They're all around the perimeter of where the fabric meets the seat. And it's also worth noting at this time that you are going to need a hog ring kit. It's like 15 bucks on Amazon. It comes with specialized pliers and a whole bag of hog rings. And that's just going to be to replace those once you take it off. So my shears weren't really cutting it. They've taken a beating. They're old. They're not sharp anymore. So I was having a really difficult time. So another way to quickly take care of these hog rings since they're made out of copper, they're pretty flexible. Just get a pair of vice grips, adjust them to clamp on to the hog ring, and then just twist it to twist it to either side, and it'll easily remove the hog ring. Once you get all the hog rings removed off the bottom side, you're gonna want to flip it over and turn the cover inside out, and then you'll see down inside here. There's going to be more hog rings um, all the way back, and there's four per side. All right, once you get all those side ones off, you're going to have two more in the middle here, each where these little indentations are. 
All right, now that we got the old cover off, we're going to take care of this piece right here. I'm going to vacuum all this little bits out, and then we're going to roughly cut a piece of foam that fits right here out of this foam. And then all we're going to do is duct tape it in place. It doesn't really need to be crazy duct taped in there because once you get the new cover on, it's pretty much just going to stay where it is inside the cover. But you do want to use a little bit to secure it. So we're going to get started with that. All right. <clears throat> so you can see we kind of got a rough size of what's going in there. And so now we're going to leave it a little bit bigger. And we're just going to try to stuff it in there to see what we can get out of it. And when you stuff it in there, it pretty much gets it right on the money. So we're going to leave it a little bit bigger. And now we're just going to kind of tape it in place, not using a lot of tape. All right, once you put the first layer of duct tape down, you're gonna kind of notice the bulge where the other piece was. So after that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your next piece of tape already, and you're gonna kind of push down on the bulge and place your next piece of tape over that. <clears throat> and that's gonna create tension in the duct tape, and that's gonna make it look smooth, and it's gonna be sunken in like how it should be, because the, the duct tape is gonna be gripping on to the first layer of duct tape. So that's how you're going to alter it to kind of make it sit flush again. All right, I've got that just about how I want it. So now the next step is going to be take a little razor blade and pre-slice all of these little brackets here um, just so that you can get new hog rings on where they go on the old spots and do it in the same order. So do these two first. Um, put the seat on and then go around and do the two outside portions and one last thing worth noting before you go securing the new seat cover down is go ahead and mark all the spots where there's holes on the side of the seat so we got <coughs> excuse me one here one here one there and one there. So in the same location, we got four all together, two on each side. All right, so we got the cover itself uh, fastened to the foam on the top side. So now you got to remember where you took all the hog rings off of um, when you were disassembling the old one. <clears throat> For this one, there's going to be a hog ring right here, right here, right here right here so we're gonna make make four slits with the razor and then on the sides we've got one two three on either side there so we're gonna make three slits on either side <clears throat> and then in the back more of the same we got one two and you can double check how many were used by looking at your old one and you can see we got one two um, it's really hard to see on this one with this camera uh, but there's a second little indentation right here you can see the rectangle where the material looks new because it was covered <clears throat> so we're gonna get started on that one note when putting these hog rings back on is it could be quite a struggle to put it on through the hole here um, and then get it aligned with this one. Uh, so one thing I like to do is I like to put it in the pliers um, like this, like how it's supposed to be bent, and then bend them down <clears throat> so that this thing's kind of shaped like a diamond but not so bent that it closes up all the way. What that's going to do is it's going to pre-shape it so that when you are, uh, get it around the two, um, you get it in this and you get it around the seat, it's going to pre-bend it so it's really easy to mold into place like it's how, how it's supposed to. And when you finish, it should look like that. Those are the two ends collapsed onto each other. All right, so here's the seat with the new cover secured on. Um, 
this is the part right here where we added the foam and the duct tape. It sticks out a little bit, but it's not really that noticeable. So now we're just going to, in reverse order, put it back together. All right, we got the uh, frame all together on the seat. So now we just got to put the plastic covers on and go clean the inside of the truck before finally reinstalling the seat. And just to give you a side-by-side, -side, here's the old seat with the old rip in it. Um, and that was where the foam was missing. Um, it was all cracked up. We also had a tear in the side here. And you can see here, um, the new seat's all installed. It's firmly on there. This is where that hole was. Um, and it looks like it's a little lighter, but that's just because this needs to be cleaned. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, so we're going to throw those plastics on there, go clean the inside real quick, and then throw this thing in there. 